everyone, how are you? So guys, I have had an absolutely wild day today. So as I make this video, I'm going to make this as someone who is, first and foremost guys, someone who's been on the police side of this. Someone who's had a shield, you know, who and who has been standing there with a shield, looking at the crowds, having bricks, petrol bombs, all sorts of things thrown at them. I, I, I did that for a long part of my career. Also, I'm going to give you this video as someone who sat in the um, in the control van, in the surveillance van, looking at crowds and trying to anal analyse uh, the crowds and the people. I'm also going to give you this video as someone who's been stuck in a hotel with crowds of um, people trying to attack this. This happened to me several times in Afghanistan when I was a security, um, a private security officer. I'm also going to give you this video as a father and as somebody who is a local resident. And we're going to talk about the Rotherham riots, the Rotherham protests, the Rotherham hotel incident, whatever you want to go for it, guys. All right. So I, I, I've kind of done a closed down video, but I forgot to mention. Well, I didn't forget. I just didn't mention them. I've not mentioned two demographics of people on the um, on the protest inside. And these two demographics are the the nanans, so the over fifties or over over fifties, I guess would be fair to say you're a nana, and the young children, <laughs> the young men, because they are they're young men, the young men who are about. I'd say 12 to 15, because they certainly weren't adults. We'll talk about the Nanans first. So I've never seen, so as you know, I've done a lot of shield work in support of um, the RUC or police service Northern Ireland. You know, where you've stood there and you're getting, you're getting rocks thrown at you, you're getting called all sorts of names. I've never seen any Nanans. In my whole career, I've never seen any Nanans throwing rocks, throwing beer bottles, you know, I've never seen any of this. It was, it was, it was, it was such a strange thing to see. So that's one that kind of caught me off guard. Now, the other one that I've never seen any of, to this extent certainly, is the, the young boys, young men, sorry. Now, I genuinely don't know how I feel about this. First of all, the passion and the feeling that these guys were showing and the anger, the anger that these young men was, were, were showing. You know, I, I, I consider myself as one of these young men who joined the army at 16 and had a lot of uh, pent up aggression inside me. And I don't feel I ever had anything like this. So my question is, rather than condemning these young, these young men or these kids, Asking the question why and what has got them so angry to, to, to be like this. And if you go and look at the, um, yeah, sorry. If you go and look at the videos online of this incident, you'll see what, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's actually a video of like, there's a young kid and he's got like a blue mask on and he, it's really funny actually. Funny depending which way you look at it. But he runs up to this uh, police officer and he kicks them. It's only a little police officer. And he kicks the police officer and the police officer falls down. And I remember when I was in the military, if that ever happened to you, it was like a massive, like, you're like, you know, it's like, Sean, you disgraced our unit. You got kicked over by a protester. You know, and, I, and I'm really conscious of what's happened in society what's happened to our society that these young men are are that angry because I wouldn't have done that at their age you know but then you've got to ask why are they that angry and a lot of the people especially you know in government they don't they don't follow through the why what do I mean by that well for example Keir Starmer he's condemning the riots fine you know he can do what he wants he's prime minister you know but what he's not doing is trying to find the root cause of these riots, protests. He's trying, you know, he's, he's not looking at the cause. He's just trying to put, up, put a plaster over the problem. And the, pro the problem won't go away unless you deal with the root cause. Now, we can argue till we're blue in the face what the root cause is. And it, for, this, for, the, for the sake of this the video, it doesn't matter. I'm just really concerned about these young men and the nanans, you know. 
the Nanans who are worried about their heating and the cost of living and looking after their kids. And these young, I, I didn't get to speak to any of these young kids because they were, they, guys, they, these young lads, these young men, they were feral. Uh, they wouldn't talk to me. They, I, you know, I, I, I tried to speak to a few of them and they, they weren't unpolite or anything. They were just, they, they were just like in another zone. They were wild. They were, they, 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 they were just crazy guys, you know. And I've never seen anything like that in my entire life, in, in my entire 24 years of going to all the conflict zones in all the different countries of the world. Literally, you name a conflict zone in the last 25 years and 24 years, I didn't go to, um, I didn't go to Sierra Leone. But any, after Sierra Leone, any conflict zone in the world, I've been there and I've never seen anything like this, guys. You know, I saw people absolutely feral. I then saw the police push through in huge numbers. So I don't know where these extra police officers came from. Because if you if you watch my live stream and you saw me on the ground, you know, I, I said, I said, there's no way that these police officers can get reinforced. And I was really worried at the time. I was worried for everyone. You know, because I, I, you know, go look at my, um, go look at our other platform. Where literally, I, on, as soon as I got there, guys, on the live stream, I said, I said, right, there's no way for reinforcements to get in here. It's going to be very difficult to get reinforcements in. It's going to be very difficult to um, get emergency services in if something bad does happen. And the police were totally overwhelmed and they were outmatched. What I will say about the police as well, guys, if you're watching this and you're a police officer and you was in Rotherham, you need to get your cardio up, mate. Honestly, I mean, we all pay the police service for a service or a force, but... Honestly, I, 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 after running a couple hundred, like a couple hundred meters, a lot of these police officers were sweating and they couldn't breathe, and it, it was a little bit embarrassing. But you know, we'll let that fly. So, yeah. So, I, one of the th first things I said is that, that these guys can't get reinforced, and straight away in the back of my head, I've done a lot of fighting in built-up areas, uh, amphibia. And one of the things you get taught when you're doing these courses is. I'm going, to, I'm going about this a different way, but guys, but just stick with me, you'll see where I'm going. One of the things you get taught on these courses is you, if you can, don't enter a building from the ground level because that makes the people go up. And when they go up, they don't, they don't have anywhere to go, so they will put a harder resistance. Now, obviously, the, no protest is going to get ladders or abseiling from a helicopter or whatever, but I had that in the back of my mind. So what I was really, really worried about and... Um, What's happening? So I was really worried about this, guys, right? And uh, as soon as I got there, like I said on the live stream, I said, you know, I, I didn't want to make it open. I didn't want to bring it out into the, you know, I didn't want to broadcast it live. The actual problems that the police are under, because I still have kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm still a person who is for law and order. I think we should have law. I think we should have order. I think we should have a strong police service. I think we should have a strong military. I was really worried that if the situation on the ground in and around the hotel, the hotel escalated too much, <clears throat> the police didn't have anywhere to go. The roads were closed. There were too many people on the roads for them to exit. So what I was worried is that they'd, and I don't think that they had the competency on the police, uh, the policing on the ground. I don't think they had the competency because of the way they were operating. Now, I, I, what I was worried about, and I, you know, I, I said to Sarah afterwards, I said, I think this is what could happen. And I was really worried about the police understanding they couldn't defend the outside of the building and having to fall back inside the building and go to the next floor up. Guys, if this would have happened, we could have seen mass casualties because after we left, people started setting fires to this hotel. So what could have happened, if, you know, and, and I hope they've been trained not to do this under any circumstance. But what I was really worried about was, like I said, the police falling back to the building where they have some sort of cover from view, cover from cover from um, people throwing rocks, and then go up to the next floor. Because once they went up to the next floor, it becomes very difficult to move. You've not got that open space. You're not controlling the ground. You're not dominating the ground. You're literally in corridors then. And I was really worried about somebody setting fire to that building because, guys, that could have just been absolutely catastrophic for absolutely everybody involved. Thankfully, it didn't go that way. What you saw was mass reinforcements happen on the ground. And 
when I say mass reinforcements, I've like the amount the money that this must have cost is insane you know the amount of police that saturated the ground afterwards they pushed the um they did and then they did what normal a normal riot control officer would do he would um or she they would um you know try and split the groups up if you can because obviously divide and conquer it's not just you know it's not just it's not just a thing that people say divide and conquer actually works so whether we're talking about a society and we're trying to divide them with subversion or a group of protesters, dividing and conquering is a lot easier. What do I mean by that? Well, you've got a group of a thousand people. OK, cut them in half. Deal with a group of 500 people. Don't deal with that group of 500 people. Let them fester. OK, that group of 500 people is too much. All right, cut them in half again. So you see where I'm going, guys, with this divide and conquer and what the police did really well. And, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give them credit. You know, they divided the groups up, they corralled them and they and they kind of pushed them out so they thinned out. So that um, pack mentality wasn't there. And guys, that's pretty much, you know, what happened today. I've seen some things I've never seen before in my entire life. I'm pretty sure now we've reached a tipping point. I said, I think yesterday, I don't think we've reached that tipping point yet. I may be wrong, but what I've seen now... Uh, uh, I don't see a way back for that, especially in the United Kingdom. We've got groups now of, well, how do I like to say it, counter-protesters. So you've got the uh, protesters, you've got counter-protesters. At the moment, you know, we're going to get to a stage where it doesn't matter. It's just going to be us and them, depending on which side you're looking at. And all the time, you know, we need to be conscious that our enemies, our, our, our international enemies, are fanning this flame. You will have Russian agents, you will have Russian bot farms, you will have Chinese agents, maybe not so much Chinese agents, but you will have Chinese bot farms. And remember from my previous videos, guys, you don't even need to, you know, you don't even need to be out there on the ground. You can do all this stuff online now. It's easy. It's easy enough to do online. So that's the reality of the situation, guys. You know, we are in for a summer of discontent or whatever they're calling it. And you know what? Keir Starmer's been in office for a month now. He's been in office for a month today. And, you know, my, my, my mate said he sent me a meme earlier and it was like a picture of Keir Starmer. Uh, and he had like uh, one of these things where you're just starting a new job. And he said, hey, mate, how, how's your new job going after he's been there a month? So, yeah, he's been an absolute disaster on every level. His speeches have been a disaster. His policies have been a disaster. And again... I said on this channel a couple of, like, I think last month, well, yeah, so, like, yeah, well, it must have been last month, I said, you know what, I said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be negative on this government anymore, I'm gonna give them a chance, but the reality is, what we've seen is not leadership, what we've seen is not competency, we have seen a weak leader doing weak policies, and when you look at him, guys, you can just tell, and, you know, I don't want to be, I don't know, I, I don't want to be that guy who, who thinks they can look at people and judge them. And, you know, and, and you can't look at someone and judge them. But when you look at someone <clears throat> and you judge them and then everything they do goes to the narrative that you've judged them with, you're like, yeah, I can kind of judge you, mate. But anyway, guys, that is it. Guys, please stay safe, whatever you do, and just cherish your children, guys, okay? Cherish them little, them little balls of love, okay? Guys, I'm going to back to grid and I'll see you guys in the morning.